The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Uche Sekundus, has urged Nigerians to continue praying for the country to overcome all of its challenges. He said a lot of prayers are needed for the nation, adding that there are storms everywhere in the country, and it's now pathetic. Recently, several leaders of the or have given similar admonitions, you know, talking about this situation. But my question now is, are prayers the new solution to issues plaguing the country? Well, joining me to discuss this is Dakwa Daramola, a reverend and a political analyst, and Ken Okolubo, who's also a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Okay. I'm going to start with Dakwa because you are a man of the cloth, obviously. Um, and we're talking about prayers here. Nigeria has been faced by, uh, with all sorts of things. I mean, name it. I always say that our plate is literally full, including that of Mr. President. But when we say that we ought to pray, you know, for solutions to our problems, why do we need leaders if prayer is truly the key? Well, uh, once again, good evening, and to all our viewers, I say good evening. Uh, well, uh, as people of faith, you know, a, a country like Nigeria is uh, predominantly um, uh, saturated with a lot of uh, religiosity. So it's not strange when everybody calls for prayers. I mean, you hear politicians when they tell you that God has asked them to go and serve the people, and they get there and they become, you know, looters you know, and, 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 you know, people who steal our commonwealth. So it's very easy to always talk about prayer, about God, about faith and religiosity when it comes to addressing the problems of the country. But I think in all of this, it's, it's mere distraction. You know, we pray, yes. And what the people who are praying more, the common man, the, the common yes, who is suffering, are the ones who spend time in church to pray for things that ordinarily should be working for them, should be working in their favor, dividends of democracy, good roads, good hospitals, that is good health care you know, good education for their children, you know, and affordability of you know, all of these amenities. So these are the things they end up praying for in church or in mosques when ordinarily our commonwealth is sufficient to provide all of this. But because of the corrupt nature of our politicians, we have come to this level where everything has to be issue of prayer. So that's number one. However, uh, when you look at it also, when, you know, uh, PDP steps out and say prayer, 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 you wonder what kind of foundation they laid for this country. If they were in government since 1999, how many of our schools were, are functioning or were functioning under them? I mean, how many of our hospitals were functioning under PDP? How many of our refineries were functioning optimally under PDP? So you can go on and on, you know, what exactly was, what kind of foundation did they lay for the future of this country? I remember even under PDP government, you know, held by Good, good Luck Jonathan, this country sold, I mean, crude oil. We budgeted for, we were, we were we projected to sell at $65. We ended up selling at 100 and something dollars. Now, what exactly did, did we do with the money? What kind of future did we build for ourselves? So these are the issues, you know. So we cannot use prayers to keep distracting ourselves. Well, as a man of God, I would say, yes, we must pray. Everything good and everything, you know, that is, on the contrary, all requires prayers, yes. But God has endowed us as a nation so much that all we need is a leadership that is thinking. A group of people who are supposed to be leaders who should be, you know, considerate in terms of how they deploy the resources that God has endowed us with. But this is, but this, but this is, but I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to talk over you, Mr. Dakwa. I'm so sorry to talk over you, but let me butt in there. You have, of course, laid out all of the mistakes that the previous leadership had made. But this is the, the reason why the APC won the election. They campaigned on all of these ills, all of the loopholes that the PDP had created. And here we are again, it's five and a half years, if not six, down the line. And we're still dragging blames and trading it when we should be actually um, dealing with the situation and giving answers to the problem because this is what the people were promised. No, so what makes what's that, the difference between the APC-led government no, and the PDP I that you're comparing you them to? No, I, I agree with you that 
I agree with you that we should not be in the era of excuses anymore. I am one of those who believe that fundamentally this government should be doing something. And in terms of tangibility, we should be able to play our, place our hands and say, this is how far we have come. I mean, no doubt at the time when they came on board, we remember Boko Haram was everywhere. I mean, they even had flags, all, you know, all said in many places in the north. But to a large extent, they were decimated. I won't use the language that they were, they were I mean, eliminated. They were decimated and their capacity was reduced. Unfortunately, we, we should have consolidated on that as a game, but we didn't. Somehow, you know, we, we lost direction, we lost focus, and, you know, they, they gained strength again. At the moment, you know, they became fractionalized. So, and of course, we are still, you know, what they are arguing is that we are in a lot of deficit. And that is why a lot of borrowings that are taking place, a lot of borrowings, you know, that were done under the PDP government were not utilized properly. So whatever money they are looking for now, they are not having. They, they, what they have to do now is to do what those, that, that, or those governments should have done. They are having to redo all of. The, I mean, these things all over again. But we need to move into the area of tangibility. Okay. You know, we must begin to see investments. The, the, whatever investments we have that have been done in the last five years, we must begin to see results. So I agree with you totally. Okay. That we cannot, you know, we cannot continue to wait by the side of excuses. We okay. must begin to see results, and, you know, and that is what the Buhari government needs to show us. Okay. But okay. we must look at, you know, all I did was to look at the background to the story, and then look at the fact that PDP are not the ones harmonizing. Okay. You know, so that, that, that's why I said I went back into the past, and, you know, I tried to lay a background for, for the present. All right, let me go to Ken Okolubo. Um, today we have banditry, we have kidnappers, we... Um, I said some days ago, 20 people were killed as bandits attacked Zamfara State. I saw a man who was, you know, almost, he, he was almost crying, you know. It sounded more like the government has failed them, that they have been left to their fate. And so we, I, I wonder mm. why in that situation somebody would tell us to pray, whether that person be in power or not. Again, I ask. Why is it seemingly so difficult for these issues to be addressed head on? Well, uh, Priya, first of all, I'm a knight of, of St. Christopher of the Anglican Company, and apart from the fact that uh, I happen to also be a politician. But we all know what the efficacy of prayer is. At, at this critical point in time, you see, you look at a situation and you know this has gone beyond just criticism. I wonder who your guest was that was speaking where you referred to him as a man of God. And uh, I, I doubt if he's a man of God because he, he spent all the time politicking. Uh, the first thing he was embraced when somebody talked about prayer is because the situation has gone totally out of hand. You don't start talking about the blame game when we are in this kind of situation we, have, we find ourselves. In the southeast, we have, uh, they call them unknown government. But as of yesterday, they almost ran over the police headquarters in Oka. As of the last time, they said 95 policemen have been killed. INEC has lost over 25 officers. In the south, in the north, like you have rightly said, the banditry situation has gone beyond. The governor of Niger has said that there are two hours from Abuja and over 50 villages have been overrun. These were areas that were hitherto not being uh, occupied by Boko Haram. And with the, with the fact that the service chiefs were changed, at the time people were clamoring that the service chiefs should be changed. And suddenly the chief of army staff, not only the chief of army staff, the provost of the Nigerian army, the, the, uh, the, army, the directorate of army intelligence, I mean the, the three most top people in the army are dead, and you say we shouldn't be talking about prayers now. I mean, this is not the time to start even criticizing the government of Buhari, because this has gone beyond the ordinary. Because... It looks as, as if there's, 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 as, as if we are doomed or we are we are we are on autopilot to to crash landing the government in terms of the security situation. So at this time, we, we really need to pray. We really need we really need to, to seek the face of God because so, what so, is happening so, in this so country if, if we has are gone beyond if we're just facing criticism. something that is beyond the the grasp of our leaders. Let's have our religious leaders lead the country then. So we can all just be praying, 
to God to lead us. That way we can just get direction from above. And I'm not in any way trying to make fun of the idea of praying. But leaders are elected to those positions for a reason. And if they're unable to deliver and then we all have to say, oh, let's go and pray, then it means that those leaders have failed, doesn't it? Certainly. But there was a king that was told that he was going to die in the Bible. Huh? And when he went to pray, he was delivered. He, he, some years were added to his, to his life. What I'm saying here is that when you hear that to the general of the Federation tell you that he, he, uh, spare parts uh, markets can be banned and compares it to, open, to a ban on open grazing. And that is the one man that advises the president. Don't you think he need, you need to pray for God to touch his mind? Remember the way, the, the, I mean, the, the, heart, the heart of Pharaoh was hardened until God touched him and the Israelites were allowed to go. What I'm saying here is that the, lead, the leadership of the APC is, is torn between itself. So I'm trying very hard not to criticize at this point. But when you see a, a situation whereby you have tried to offer solutions, and those solutions... Oh, I think we lost um, that connection there uh, with uh, Okolubo. But let me go back to you, um, Mr. Dakwa. Um, Mr. Kolobo, okay, Mr. Kolobo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, we lost you for a second. Go ahead. So when you have leaders who have refused to listen, I look at the economy, the misery index, 33% is unemployment. Inflation is 19%. And we know the misery index is unemployment plus inflation. And the leaders are doing nothing about it. They have told us that they're going to employ over 774,000 Nigerians and pay them 20,000 for three months, which can reflect the economy of this country. They, that, is, that is almost at a snail speed. We really don't know if people are even getting their alerts. Over six, seven months we have been on that. We are told about the empire that they have registered the 500,000 that they've had. And now... <laughs> Oh dear, the, the, the connection there is gone again. So <laughs> back to Mr. Da Daramola. Mr. Dakwa, you did hear what Mr. Kolubo said, that you, you, you were rather politicizing the issue other than um, talking about the or addressing the issue. Um, but I, I asked you the question that I asked him earlier on. Why is it seemingly difficult for our leaders to address the issues that we're facing head on? I mean, I'm one of those people that does not really care if the president addresses us, but Nigerians are asking the president to address them. They want to feel a sense of belonging, a sense that, you know, they want to be sure that the president understands where they're coming from and, and does sympathize with them and not his personal aides. Of course, Nigerians also don't want to hear lip service paid to anything. They want to hear that government is doing something and see it. Why isn't that what we're supposed to be experiencing right now? And why are we not experiencing it? Well, well, the, the first thing I would like to say, and I hope Mr. Ken is listening to me, I'm not a politician, number one, and I spent all my years, my adult life, as a journalist on television interviewing people. So if you understand that, you know, it doesn't, it's not right for any guest to come on board, I begin to challenge whether I'm a man of God or I'm politicking or whatever. If you agree with me when you want to disagree with me, you don't need to, you know, delve into who I am or who I'm not and all of that. That is... You know, such insults are not permitted on, tele on television. Number two, let me say clearly that here that you are, you are very correct when you say that what we want are results. I am a man of God, and so I do prayers every, every minute of my, of, of my living, of my, of my existence. But there, what I'm saying is there are some things that we don't need to begin to pray about. You know, we don't need to if we have done what we ought to do. There are clearly things that are expected of us over the years as a, as a nation that we have failed to do that is haunting us today. So for me, I think whatever the government is, the Bwari government must understand that people report confidence you know, in them. And the reason why they did that is because they want results. When people have forgotten so soon that we have been at this level before. Even the likes of Michael Zekome and many were kidnapped. Even the likes of Yabo Bastardo was attacked. You know, we've been at this, we've been on this for many years. And that's why some people, I mean, in Bununyadi, you know, in United States, some, some school students were burnt to death. You know, they were burnt, I, 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 you know, to ask you, sorry. So, I mean, we've been here, we've been here before. What we now want to begin to hear and begin to see, we want to begin to see 
a, a level of change, a level of progress. And that's why I understand that there's been years of investment. If this government is saying that what they've been doing is investing in very critical sectors of the economy, now let's begin to see results. You know, a couple of, I mean, a billions of naira have been released, you know, from the coffers of government for us to acquire Tokano jets and to acquire Alpha jets and, to, and, you know, to fight the insurgency. Let's begin to see that the insurgency, I mean, they, they have been totally, even if not, you know, even not completely, you know, eradicated or, you know, we should begin to see that they have been totally dis, you know, dismantled, dislodged. You know, let's see those kind of progress. Let people have some measure of safety. I mean, some assurance that they are safe. This is what we should be doing now. No, I don't want to focus only on the federal government when the constitution of security. Let's talk about the state government also. Every state governor is getting what we call security votes. These security votes, they do not declare it to anybody. They don't tell us how much is voted to them. They don't tell us how much they spend for the security votes. Okay. It is time for RCPC and EFCC to begin to prove these security votes. All right. What exactly are they doing with these votes? These are billions of dollars. And yes, they will tell you that they are that they, 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 they cannot fix security in their own state. Okay. That everybody is looking up for Abuja. I say that there are too many issues that we need to address. Okay. And the thing is, All right. why is the state government or state governors fighting you know, financial autonomy for the local government? Why are they fighting it? Why are they fighting financial autonomy for the judiciary? Okay. Why are they fighting it? I can tell how passionate you are about this particular topic. It's very sensitive, Mr. Darabola, but I want to thank you. I don't know if we have Mr. Kolobo back quickly for his uh, final statements. Okay, you're here, Mr. Kolobo. In, in closing, because he said that um, we need to see action, we need to see things happen. But I want to go back to you on what we were saying before you went off. If these leaders who we have given a job to do seem to be unable to do this job, and we keep waiting at the expense of more and more people dying, dead bodies are piling up, the toll is going higher and higher, and more and more people are feeling unsafe. And, you know, before now, when it's happening in the north, we feel like, oh, it's very far from us, so we don't really understand how serious it is. But now people are being picked up in Lagos. Kidnappers are everywhere. We see and hear stories every other day. Um, what if the government fails again to come to our rescue or do what it needs to do? Where does that leave us and what do we do in closing? Well, I think, I think quickly what we need to do is we have the constitutional hearing uh, uh, conferences starting from the 26th and the 27th. We quickly need to, uh, uh, de there should be devolution of powers quickly. We need state policing, we need restructuring, we need to make the center very weak at this point and make the state stronger. Because you talked about the states and the fact that the governors are the chief security officers of their states. But that is only in, in, a, in a, on paper. In actual sense, the commissioners of police don't take instructions from the governors. The director of SSS for states don't take directives from governors. We need to actually carry a devolution of powers. We need, we need restructuring. We need to remove the powers from the center, give more powers to the state. Then we now have locals policing their, their territory. There we can give a more measure of, and sense of security. Because without security, there cannot be investment. We cannot move forward. We need to secure our lives first. All right. Uh, Ken Okolubo and Dakwa Daramola, thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. My it's my pleasure. All right, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now and hear what Nigerians have to say on prayers and the country. And when we return, I will give you my take. Prayer without work is nothing. So even Bible made it as a priority. When you pray, you walk. So looking at the predicament and the circumstances that surrounded Nigeria now, we just need to get out of our comfort zone and do something about it. Because when you look at the government, it's a kind of recycling from APC to PDP, just 
normal people, they are still the same people that are managing us from ages. So what we need to do, what we pray, we youth, we need to go out and take the mantle. Prayer can solve Nigerian problem if you are praying hard and, and praying for God to, def, uh, to answer our prayer so that this, this country will change because we are suffering. Things are getting hard every day, more and more. Prayer can change this nation. It's only prayer can solve Nigeria problem because what is going on uh, going on now, nobody, nobody, has a, now any time be this. Uh, anyway, Bible said with God, all things are possible. So I trust God when you pray, you understand, and your prayer will be answered. So by prayer, I believe Nigeria will be a better place to go. Well, prayer is a very essential tool for a change of every country. But likewise, Bible makes us to understand that faith without work is dead. So keep praying for Nigeria to be better and not taking step while praying is another religious exercise. So when we are praying for the country to be better, we have to take necessary action or steps in making the country to be better. <laughs> Even the Bible says, faith without work is dead. So when you pray, you walk. You pray to God, then you move and do the action. You know, if you, if you pray and without doing what we need to do, it amounts to nothing. Because everybody prays. And why are we still having corrupt people on a hierarchy of places? So even those people, they pray as well. And yet they don't do what they ought to do. So it's, in the, it's, it's, it's personal. So when you pray, at the same time, guide yourself with that prayer and do the needful. Here's my take. Nigeria is at a point where its leadership needs to be clear and succinct and need specific strategies enunciated and acted upon in order for us to move this country away from the troubled waters that are raging with insecurity, with ethnic and regional tensions, banditry, kidnapping and terrorism shaped in different forms. What Nigerians need is a government that is alive to its responsibilities, not one that would politicize issues instead of addressing them. We are getting set to roll out the drums very soon to celebrate 20 years or more of what we call a democracy. Yet, can the average Nigerian say they've gotten good governance nor the dividends of democracy? So, dear Nigerian leader, what we want is for you to provide clarity and leadership. Can you at least give us that? Is it within your grasp? Because we are tired of the talking. Well, that's my take. I'm Mariana Cohn. Thanking you for watching.